don't hesitate if you think that you're ready and um, you kind of have everything ready to go, but you're just waiting because it's a um, an issue of believing in yourself and having confidence. Uh, know that you are not alone and just rip the band-aid off, <laughs> I think is the best advice I could give to people. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Commerce Coffee and Community Podcast Entrepreneurs Edition. Today I'm joined by Mackenzie Kerr of Mackenzie Kerr Consulting. How's it going today, Mackenzie? It's good. How are you? Good, good. Why don't you just start off today by telling us a bit about your background, Mackenzie, uh, where you grew up and what made you decide to settle a business here in Prince George? Sure. I grew up in Prince George most of my life. Um, a fun fact that I tell at parties is that I actually grew up in the Yukon until I was nine. Oh, so okay. I haven't been here my whole life, but more of my life than yeah, the majority. <laughs> more yeah. than half. So yeah. Uh, so I've been here in Prince George. Um, and I went to high school, college, and university. I studied forestry, uh, not marketing, which is what I'm doing now. But uh, I find fun intersections of forestry and marketing, and it's kind of the best of both worlds. So that's something that we can talk about more later. Yeah, but absolutely. Yeah, I decided to set up my business in Prince George, uh, mainly because I want to live in Prince George. <laughs> I <laughs> Yeah, I love it here. I actually just bought a house with my partner a couple months ago. Right, Congratulations. right downtown. That's a, so a big step. <laughs> it was a big step. Yeah. So we're stuck here because now we have a mortgage. So, <laughs> so we're not going anywhere. <laughs> but Fair yeah, enough. Prince George is an amazing community for entrepreneurs and uh, for young people who are interested in kind of uh, growing their roots in Prince George and settling here. Right. Um, there's lots to offer. And obviously, I'm a huge proponent of Prince George because I also ran for office wanting to represent Prince George. <laughs> so that's kind of also part of my background. Um, learning how to market myself, which is much more difficult than other businesses. But <laughs> yeah, all of that kind of came together, forestry and running for office. And then uh, marketing became an option. And um, I have loved it ever since. I've only been doing it full time now for a year. I just passed my one year Very cool. Congratulations. business anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, it's been a very fast learning curve, very right. fast growth. And I'm very excited to get into it today. That's awesome. So you've had this really cool path of kind of, you know, going going to school. Um, you were, you know, in a program that uh, is not necessarily reflective of what you're in today. Mm -hmm. um, now, speaking of that change, what kind of motivated you to start your business? Uh, and what would you say your mission is behind Mackenzie Kerr Consulting? So what helped me start my business? We'll start with that or what kind of got me into it. Uh, I was learning a lot about reaching the public. So whatever that may be, I was learning a lot of that in forestry when you create forest policy and learning how important public engagement and consultation right. is. And that was part of my classes. And then I learned a lot of that when I was running for office. <laughs> and that was my favorite part. Yeah. So it wasn't, you know, the debates or the intense policy stuff. It was getting to talk to people and try to educate people about what I was passionate about in a way that they understood it and a way that uh, resonated with them and that had like we found a connection, right? right. Uh, finding something in common and educating them and teaching them about this thing that I'm really passionate about, whatever it may be. Um, and so that's kind of how it led me into starting a marketing agency. Um, I wanted to help other business owners be able to share their message and their values with their customers in a way that was fun and engaging and like stress-free because social media is so stressful Definitely. for so many people. <laughs> um, and I love it. So I wanted to help business owners that know how important it is, but that just don't have time or don't have the, the energy after, right. you know, after a full day <laughs> of running their own business to like film a bunch of TikToks or reels. So I, am helping business owners kind of reach their audience in a fun, engaging, uh, really meaningful way and the most stress-free way possible, hopefully right. doing it all for them so that they don't need to even worry about it. That's awesome. So, you know, really being able to help those businesses bring their messages to new and engaging platforms. One thing I've seen, uh, you know, over the last year or two following you on TikTok is just seeing the fun and, you know, trendy ways you're able to bring information. And mm -hmm. especially through your campaign, it was it was kind of 
just really innovative, right? Yeah. So being able to, uh, yeah, being able to give businesses that opportunity is is really wonderful and and totally a worthwhile mission. Mm-hmm. Um, Thanks. now, yeah. So you've got your your business on the go, um, and obviously you you know a bit of a digital agency, lots of different types of content that you do. Uh, what would be your favorite piece of social media content to help businesses on? Um, when business owners give me free reign to come up with super (laughs) fun ideas for their content, whatever that may be, maybe that's not videos. Maybe they don't want to be in the video and we can work with that as well. Um, I have a whole bunch of clients that we can come up with super fun ways to make TikToks and reels. Video content is amazing. And we all know that it does the best right now on social media. So if business owners can take the leap and find creative ways to, uh, shoot videos and post them on social media. Uh, that's my favorite, especially the ones where the client says, you know what, just give me the script and I'll do it. <laughs> you have free reign to come up with creative control. Uh, then I can really find super fun video ideas that fit them and their personality and their business and really help show their customers what they're all about in a way that isn't just a boring scripted video, you know? Right. Right. And in that in that sort of process where you're helping them develop videos and, and video ideas, is there ever um, like some coaching necessary to where you're um, maybe they're not fully like bought into the idea of video content or they're just a bit nervous? Like, how do you how do you handle business owners that might uh, might have some complication there? Yeah, it's not everyone is an expert. That's for sure. That's why they hire me <laughs> <There you laughs> to go. make it as easy as possible for them. Yeah. Video is still very nerve wracking for a lot of people. It's difficult to do. Like it's just a a long process, right? I mean, if you watch me make my own TikToks, it's embarrassing. I take like 10 (laughs) takes of every video. Like even though some of us look like we're very good at it, we're probably doing 10 takes, right? So it's social media is not as it seems, right? People can clip different videos together. They can film it a million times. Um, So Yeah, just kind of helping business owners that maybe struggle a little bit with that sort of stuff. We come up with creative ways to make it easier. So maybe, you know, they don't, their face isn't in in every video because maybe that's the part that they get nervous. And so we find creative ways to like put their product or service in the video without them being in it, right? Maybe they don't want to dance or lip sync. So we make it all (laughs) educational talking videos because they know their product really well. And they want to show how they make it or how they provide their service, but they don't want to dance or whatever it may be. Right. So, yeah, yeah. I think I think you just uh, gave a lot of relief to business (laughs) owners who might be listening that are wanting to get into this area, but we're afraid of the dance videos or something like that. Yeah, I have never danced on TikTok. You do not have to do it (laughs) to to succeed on TikTok. Yeah, that's great news for some. Absolutely. (laughs) Um, Now, I've got to ask you, what is your favorite place here in town to grab a bite? It can be. Uh, cash, it's just across the board, yep. dessert, whatever you like. I guess maybe like your favorite food and then like sure. your favorite place. Sure. Um, we spend a lot of time downtown, obviously. We yep. chose to buy a house downtown because we spend so much time downtown. <laughs> uh, probably I have two, the makery. Okay. Like the environment, the fact that I can oh, do sure. crafts, I can work, I can grab the most delicious coffee ever and <laughs> treats. Um, and then also... Ivy's Family Kitchen, they just opened okay. recently, and it's um, the best Vietnamese food I've ever. I've not got a chance to Oh my that gosh, out, uh, I, I'm ready. The salad rolls, <laughs> I could literally eat them every single day. They're amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. So there you go. Shout out to Makery and Ivy's Kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so with with that, now that uh, you know people have the chance to pause this, go grab a bite from there and come back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, take us back to the start of your entrepreneurial journey. And what were some of the first steps that you took to prepare your business concept? Sure. So I did a lot of preparation. I actually was very worried to start. Like I was really hesitant and I didn't think that I knew enough. So I had a lot of imposter syndrome. I still do around, you know, whether or not I feel like I know enough to be an expert in this field and actually, you know, sell it as a service and support people, uh, which I know a lot of us struggle with. Uh, especially young people, especially women. <laughs> so it's it's something that I was holding back for a while, but I did do a lot of training to get to the point so that I felt comfortable to launch a business. I did training with Hubspace locally. I did a business course through Stillwater Consulting. They're like a consulting agency to help young business owners. It was a grant through the government. So that was really awesome. Um, 
I also took a Lackerty Digital Marketing Boot Camp, which is an online boot camp. And they actually, after the boot camp was done, they actually hired me to be a teacher on that oh, boot wow. camp, <laughs> specifically for TikTok, because they're like, we need a, a newer, up, a newer, you know, updated video for TikTok. Right. We would love your support. So I was like, this is That's crazy. Awesome. I just did yeah. your course. And now, yeah, the yeah. imposter syndrome, it was, yeah, it was a lot. But it, so I did all of those kind of programs and courses to get ready. Right. And then I had some people help me with a website. I had some sure. some local mentors kind of support me through what do I need to launch a business? When do I know I'm ready to like officially launch? Air quotes, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you're listening. Um, yeah, so it was it was a long kind of process of feeling confident enough to do it. Right. And uh, yeah, I thought I needed to have like every social media post ready for my own business before I launched yeah. and all that sort of stuff. I needed great headshots and a logo and business cards. And realistically, really, you don't need half of that to get started. You just start and you'll like learn as you go, right? right? You may think that everything's perfect and then you may be three weeks in to launching your business and realizing that your onboarding process is not as smooth as it could be. Yeah. So like you kind of have to start to work out the kinks uh, you're not going to work out all the kinks until you b begin and then get yeah. advice from your clients, from your mentors, like, you know, test some things and see what works and what yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Feedback is such a critical part of being an entrepreneur, right? And being receptive to that feedback sort of as you, as you start out. But it really sounds like you had a great start to kind of combat some of those internal feelings, right? Uh, mm -hmm. The, the self-doubt that goes into being an entrepreneur is, is almost a constant, right? Um, so that's, that's really wonderful to hear. And you mentioned mentorship a little bit in the start of your entrepreneurial journey. What role uh, and, you know, how important have mentors, uh, mentorship been in playing a role to your entrepreneurial journey? There's too many people specifically to list because I've had <laughs> so much support. I was thinking about this question yep. before the podcast, but how it has impacted me is like, I can't even describe it. I don't think that I would be anywhere close to where I am a year you know, a year ago right, without right. all of the mentorship and support that I've been, that I've gotten from the community. And that's yeah. like current clients or mentors or people who are just in my life as a friend. Yeah. It's been, yeah, monumental to, to get so much support. And just from people who, you know, maybe they don't have the budget to, to purchase my services, but they've been huge cheerleaders online and just yeah, like the support yeah. in every, every avenue has been amazing. But yeah, no mentorship on, you know, the details that I wasn't an expert at before I started my business, accounting, you know, bookkeeping. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The books. Um, thankfully my girlfriend is an accountant, so I get a second pair of eyes on all my accounting, which is That's amazing. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, no, it's just been amazing. And current clients have been great to work with because they'll, they'll give business advice. A lot of the time they're business owners that have been, right. you know, business owners in, in town for a really long time. So yeah. it's amazing yeah. to hear their feedback and they're, you know, giving me referrals. And it's just amazing to be in such like a close knit supportive community because you can run into people that you know, and right. you know, you're kind of always one or two separation degrees away from someone that, that you do know. So yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. It's, it's so critical that people, um, and, and a lot of people don't know that there are mentors out there. Mm -hmm. And like you said, literally right there, a mm -hmm. couple degrees of separation away. Mm -hmm. um, it could be family, it could be friends, mm -hmm. even if you're bouncing your ideas for your own company off mm -hmm. of them. It's a great way to sort of remove yourself from the stress mm -hmm. of trying to do that with a client first and, uh, and getting some feedback from mm -hmm. your inner circle. Mm -hmm. And oh. even if they're not like an official mentor, you're yeah. still getting mentorship from them, right? Yeah. You don't have to be stressed about like, oh, I need to find a mentor. Well, it's probably yeah. the friend that you talk to all the time. <laughs> yeah. You probably already <laughs> have a few of them, right? Yeah. But just be that that word can be kind of like yeah. stressful for young entrepreneurs. They're like, I don't have an official mentor. It's yeah. like, you probably do. It, it doesn't have to be like a 25 yeah. year business yeah. vet in a yeah. suit. It could be someone on a forum, yeah. even, like someone in the community group, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, definitely find, you can find mentorship in so yeah. many unexpected places. Yeah. Um, okay, so you know, you've got, you've got a lot of mentorship, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. But every entrepreneur seems to kind of have one big influence backing them through their journey mm -hmm. and and who would that be for you do you think there's people in different you know different positions in my life like some people give me support in other ways um than just one I think like business wise um 
probably Chris, Chris okay. King. Yep. He's now one of my like subcontractors that works with me and for me, for my clients, because I've had to grow and bring on more people, which has been amazing. Uh, so Chris has probably helped me like from day one, the most when it comes to business stuff. Um, of course I've had like lots of support from partners and friends and that yeah. sort of stuff, but, uh, business related, I think Chris has kind of always been there and, uh, now we're working together. So it's super fun because cool. yeah, no, he's amazing. So he worked at Hubspace earlier and then yeah. I was doing some of my coaching through him and now he's okay. doing his own thing, started his own entrepreneurial journey and we get to work together. So super cool that you were yeah. able to keep that connection. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, now every entrepreneurial journey has the good and the bad. Yep. Um, <laughs> why don't we start off with bad? Sure. <laughs> with the bad <laughs> okay. Quick. Sure. What has been the hardest part of this whole process for you so far? The hardest part is probably um, finding a balance. I know that probably everyone says that, but I think it's the <laughs> most common hurdle for business right. owners is like when you're an entrepreneur, how do you find time for work-life balance yeah. when, you know, you might not have coworkers, you're just like always at home working yeah. and, you know, so that probably is just like finding time for myself, not overdoing it, knowing when to say no, um, is, is part of that balance. Um, sometimes I'll, you know, I'm, I'm like almost fully booked up right now. Like I, I have yeah. a hard time saying I'm fully booked up because yeah. I, am but it's weird to say that right. uh so i'm like well <laughs> i think i am actually right yeah. and so like finding my my boundary of what's enough for right. me uh is probably one of the biggest things because i want to keep saying yes but it's like at what point do you burn yourself out you don't want to kind of grow too quickly without onboarding more like co uh you know subcontractors or, or yeah. co-workers or staff even yeah. uh so that you don't kind of peter out. You want to make sure that it's a sustainable growth pattern. So yeah, just I've been doing some coaching still with Hubspace with Mary and like making sure that I'm growing sustainably and not burning right. myself out. Yeah. Uh, so finding that balance is probably the hardest thing. And uh, when you're an entrepreneur, it's very hard to say no mm -hmm. to clients because you kind of want to work with everyone especially at the start right? at the start you're yeah. like i don't know if i can afford to say no right yeah. now right and yeah. so it's it's a lot of balance between like you know morals and values and who do you want to work with what is your gotcha. ideal client and then uh well if i say no to this one maybe i'll it, it's yeah. gonna leave room for another client that maybe lines up better with me in the future but how do i know that that's coming right i don't know what next month's gonna look like and so it's uh it's very nice to now like only a year into business, be comfortable knowing that I'm, you know, not yeah. having to say yes to everything. Like I'm, right. I'm safe enough, uh, to be able to pick and choose wisely and like work with my favorite people. And yeah, no, it's just, it's, it's good to find your balance and like find yeah. how much you can take on and know how much you can take on. And like, at what point do I need to expand my, my business? Right. Yeah. And it, it just, it, it really is the best outcome for everybody, mm -hmm. right? The clients that you work with get the best version of mm -hmm. Mackenzie possible mm -hmm. and Mackenzie gets to go home yeah. and sleep at a reasonable yeah. hour. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. a win-win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're not going to spread yourself too thin, right? So yeah. it's, yeah, it's very easy to take on lots of clients at the beginning, but you yeah. have to be able to find a balance so that you can, yeah, yeah. be awake the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So you don't sleep through them. Either. Yeah. Uh, how about the good? How about the best part so far? This is, this is the exciting part. Yeah. <laughs> this, this part's super exciting. There's so many best parts. Like it's, yeah, it's hard to even like think of just one. Uh, today I had a comment from someone <laughs> on one of my clients, TikTok accounts that said like, whoever is running this marketing oh. is doing a great job. And I was like, oh yes, that is that's, the best that's feeling the ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, you don't know who it is, but you just made my week. Like nice. that's the best nice. thing ever. Yeah. Um, and so, and then just seeing like your clients extremely happy with the work that you're doing. So not just the public, but also the clients are like, wow, th you made my life so much easier by doing this for me or you know, I also provide coaching and auditing. So if someone can't, doesn't want me to run their account for them or can't right. afford it, or they're not at the point in their business where they need that yet, I also do coaching. So I'll do a kind of an audit of their social media accounts and give them advice and recommendations and what they can do to make it better and reach more people. Yeah. And, you know, maybe a 
more specific hashtag list. That's a very small part of the puzzle, but every little piece of the puzzle, you know, needs to be tweaked to reach your ideal customer and yeah. match your business goals. So I do that as well. And to see it work after, you know, to see your clients like follow your advice <laughs> and have it actually work is feel so good. It's so validating that it's like, wow, I, I do know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a really good business model for to make your services so much more accessible. To yeah. Everybody, right. Yeah. Because you're right in a sense that like some entrepreneurs are, are still in those little gross stages mm -hmm. where they can't hire, uh, you know, a company to take it over, but they're willing to, um, you know, take a lesson and, and learn and grow their own skill set. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, I yeah. commend you on that. That's really Thank nice. You. Yeah. Teaching people to do it themselves is great. I love that because then they can make their own videos. They can post it when they have time. Right. You know, they're very personable. Uh, it's kind of like off the cuff and often those are, that's the content that often does the best, right? Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> I want them to get to the point where they can do it by themselves and they yeah. know how to do it. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing to see that actually work and have the clients just feel so fulfilled and have their books fill up and all their products sell out. And it's the best feeling ever to know that you helped part, be part of that. Absolutely. Um, you know, business always is uh it is it's all good in hindsight right mm -hmm. so um i gotta ask you uh through all these good and bads mm -hmm. what was the one piece of advice at the very start that you wish you had to kind of begin your entrepreneurial journey um it's very specific to my industry to marketing and that sort of stuff content creation but uh buy more storage for your phone because you're gonna <laughs> run out very quickly <laughs> Very when true. you're filming for other people no but d deeper advice i think is just start like yeah. don't hesitate and wait um you know what you're gonna think that you're not ready and you want everything to be perfect um but just start so that you can put your services out there and you can kind of test and see what works you may build a whole website and you haven't even figured out if that's exactly what people want. Yeah. I actually started my business wanting to offer TikTok coaching specifically and like helping run people, helping people run their TikTok accounts. Right. There's very few people that were ready to do just TikTok or focus yeah. all their energy on it. They wanted a broader social media, you know, audit for all of right. their accounts or companies that wanted me to do it for them. They wanted TikTok to be a part of that, but not just TikTok. And so I had to like adjust. I had that up on my website thinking, oh, this will be super awesome. I'm the only one that's focusing in on TikTok, but then there wasn't the demand. So you really have to kind of like tweak things. And now it's part of my packages, but it's not a standalone right. because right. there just isn't the desire for people to only focus on that like there is in bigger cities. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just kind of testing things and not holding yourself back when you know you're ready. Like when people are telling you that you're ready, stop making up excuses that you're like, no, my website isn't quite done or I don't have yes. all my yeah. graphics done, my logo, my yeah. business cards aren't here. You know what? You're not going to be handing out 300 business cards in the first week either. Trust me. I wish that was true, but yeah. unless you're going to a fair or something, right? Yeah. Just yeah. just start and uh, people will there to will be there to back you, especially in this town. People are really supportive of new business owners. Yeah, I, I really like that point on having the, uh, using that time to really mm -hmm. define your service to demand sort of area. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, so many people will go in and customize all their assets mm -hmm. and spend all that money mm -hmm. to market for one thing specifically. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that the ni other 90% of the business is, is going unmarketed, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I had a hard time keeping up with my own marketing over the first six months. I was like, I'm literally, <laughs> this is my full-time job now is like yep. helping people make content. And I'm having a very hard time keeping up with my own schedule at just a few posts a week because yep. I was creating so much content that, for my clients. And so you have to remember that like, you know, you need to treat yourself as a client when it comes to my sort of business, right? Treat yourself as a client, like give yourself enough time that you can also make your own posts. You can also work on your own marketing, your accounting, your books, yeah. your bookkeeping, like put that into your daily schedule so that it's not an afterthought and it's just part of your like routine, which I'm saying these things out loud and I'm still barely doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's what I, if I say it out loud, then maybe I will start to practice it more. But that would be my advice is just like treat yourself as a client so that you can get that stuff done. 
because often it comes last and it's the stuff that's done at midnight on a Tuesday because you forgot that your GST is due the next day, (laughs) which (laughs) mine is due in two days. So yeah, (laughs) learning all of that stuff and just kind of keeping up with it, I think is, is a really big learning curve. And I'm very grateful that I've had so many mentors and people to help me stay on track and make sure that I'm not burning out and that this is a sustainable long-term business for me because I love it and I want it to be. So it's funny how it all goes sort of back to scheduling, right? Yeah. And back to the balance that is so essential to mm-hmm. entrepreneurship. Absolutely. Um, in your experience, this is, uh, we're moving on a mm-hmm. bit to the advice uh, section of the show for our listeners here. Um, in your experience, what is one common misconception that businesses have about their social media? Uh, whether that be the clients that you've taken on or just something that you've noticed from the businesses around you? There's a few. I think the the first one is um, the businesses like often don't put social media first. It's kind of an afterthought. They're like, okay, I'm going to get to that after. They're so focused, which totally fair. They're so focused on making their product or providing their service that the marketing of that kind of comes after and you're not a marketer. I get it. You want to, you know, do whatever your service is, hairdressing, candle making, whatever it may be. That's what you're an expert in. Right. Right. So it's very hard to do something that is difficult when you're not an expert at it. But I think the misconception is that, you know, businesses don't give it the importance that it has. Right. They kind of think, well, you know, that'll be nice to do, but I don't think that it's going to have that much of a significance on my business if I'm, you know, not, if I'm only posting once a month, you know, I don't think there's going to be that much of a difference. And there is, (laughs) there's a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's one. Um, The other one is very specific to content creation, a misconception um, that you can create shorter videos than you think. People are, you know, worried about packing all the information into a video when they post online. And it's like, actually, that's four videos right there. Like cut up that 90 second video into four different videos because people's attention spans, as we know, are very short. So don't do more work than you need to be doing. Cut up that one video that you shot. You don't need to be changing your shirt in every video (laughs) clip. People know that we batch create content now. That's what people do. So yeah, I think those are a few misconceptions that are um, slowing people down because they're they're trying to make so many videos when they don't need to be. They could just be repurposing and restyling and cutting up the same video multiple different ways. No, that's uh, that's a really great point just in terms of uh, I, I go back to when I was running my business, mm-hmm. just trying to find that time to do social media. Mm-hmm. I really could have used some Mackenzie Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Uh, <laughs> now, um, we, we talked a bit about mentorship before as well um, and a little bit more about sort of what mentors do and what mentors do for you in terms of playing a role for your business development. But do you have any advice for a first-time entrepreneur who's kind of looking to identify that mentorship and and maybe seek it out as well? Uh, One of the biggest places that I have uh, found community and with that comes mentorship is the Leap Women for Business program um, that's run out of Community Futures, I believe. (laughs) Um, Out of Community Futures. And Leap Business for Women is like its own sort of program. And they have luncheons once a month, Zoom and in person. And so you get to connect with other uh, women entrepreneurs, which has been awesome. Uh, So that's one place that you can go. Another place you can go is funny, but you can just go online. Like there's a lot of local (laughs) people, local, not even, you know, strangers across the internet, but local people that are posting mentorship online. And you can search that by looking at local hashtags, right? You can search online. Google's not going to pop these things up. You have to search (laughs) on the social media platforms and then you'll find other women. You know, it doesn't need to be someone in the same industry as you to be a mentor. So find a business owner that you see on social media. If social media is something that you want to improve on and you see, wow, they're doing a really good job. I'd love to chat with them. Or, you know, someone who uh, is talking about, doing a lot of educating, right? So if a business owner is doing a lot of educating about how they started their business, you know that they're interested in mentorship, (laughs) right? Because they want to share it with people. So they might, you know, want to have coffee with you. Um, There's another program called WeBC, Women Entrepreneurship BC, and it's a provincial program. 
Um, Shauna Harper was from Prince George and now she moved down and she's the head of it. Uh, and they are doing an upcoming event soon, I believe. Uh, she's coming back up to PG for it. But there's a lot of women on uh, women mentors in Prince George that have been matched up with mentees through the WeBC program. So if you sign up for WeBC emails, you'll probably, you know, have the opportunity to go to events and be paired up with someone. So there's lots of different opportunities to look for mentorship. You just kind of have to follow one or two pages and then they'll all start <laughs> popping up on your feed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I find to just like, you know, asking for mentorship, uh, it can just be like come a friendship, right? It doesn't need to be so explicit, like we said before, where you have like a contract. <laughs> yeah. It can it can be a friendship yeah. with someone yeah. and make sure that you're, you know, it's a it's a mutualistic uh, relationship and what you're getting, you're also giving and you're supporting their business as well. Um, that's how I have the best relationships is they're like natural organic relationships. It doesn't feel forced. Um, and yeah, those are kind of the best mentors that I have. I'm I'm so glad you shouted out some some like mm -hmm. actual provincial people. and regional <laughs> yeah. resources because yeah. people I think I think a lot of the time will think that they have to get a mentor from within their own circle or yeah. it has to be yeah. um you know their dad's friend's uncle who runs the business down the street mm -hmm. right um like if you don't know anybody there's still plenty of opportunities mm -hmm. to find mentorship uh here in Prince George. Mm -hmm. Um yeah so we also talked a bit about not waiting to start your business, mm -hmm. not making sure things are perfect and flush uh, to get things off the ground. Uh, now, this is especially a, a tough topic for young entrepreneurs who are feeling, um, you know, self-doubt, whether that's coming out of school with uh, maybe unrelated experience mm -hmm. or coming out of school not having worked a job before. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of different opportunities or situations where, um, they feel a lot of hesitancy in trying to start a business. Um, so how did you overcome that initial hesitancy and sort of rip the Band-Aid off, mm -hmm. you know, so to speak, on starting your business? Yeah, it was difficult. I was very hesitant. I was very scared, anxious. Um, I was worried that, you know, I wouldn't get any clients. And this was like I didn't transition from having like a nine to five and then doing this on the side. I jumped right into it because like, you know, contract, short time contracts had ended. Yeah. So it was like natural for me to just do it by itself. Uh, so I didn't have anything else to, so I was very nervous to jump yeah. right into it. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, and I had a degree in forestry. If everything failed, I could <laughs> go work in the bush, <laughs> but I'm too much of an extrovert. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I had to rip the bandaid off and I think I was supported through that, uh, through, my friends and family because I would show them my website before it was online and I would show them what I had planned and some of my packages and I talked through every single detail of my packages and I was like would would this be something you would buy <laughs> like <laughs> what, you know kind of yeah. quizzing my friends and family on pieces of the puzzle uh to see their reaction or you know do like a fake coaching call with a friend to see what i need to include and and okay. you know yeah. just kind of practicing yeah. so i did a yeah. little bit of that uh and that was really helpful cuz it helped me narrow down what i wanted to talk about i had a lot of ideas and so i had to kind of narrow them down yeah. squish them down i can't have 15 different service options on my website right i needed to kind of narrow <laughs> it down um so yeah so that's kind of how I how I did that is I tested things out a little bit on friends and family and um used my own experience of my own social media platforms to use as examples of like I think that this video did really well because and I analyzed it and that was you know a piece of content that I would create um I started a series on TikTok of like how to use TikTok for small business owners and that kind of kicked off my TikTok growth on my business page. So if you start okay. a series on something that you're really good at talking <laughs> about, that's kind of how you can build your platform if you're just thinking of starting TikToks. So some <laughs> advice for you. Um yeah, so I I uh I was pretty hesitant, but I got support from friends and family and and uh yeah, and eventually I just I just did it. I like posted my website to be live and I posted it on my social media platforms. And it was nice because I already had like a personal social media platform. So when I started my business social media platform, 
I could tell everyone on my other one, hey, right. I, I'm doing this thing. Come follow me over here. So I had a big influx of people come over that wanted to support my business. And I was like watching on uh, Google. You can see how many people go to your website every day. And I, I was like watching it. <laughs> <laughs> to grow. Yeah, I was like, Super oh my gosh, cool. look at all yeah. the, there's 10 people on my website at one time. This is so cool. So it was, uh, it was a really cool experience, but I just had to do it. I was ready and when I started talking myself in circles, I ca I was hearing that feedback from friends and family. And they're like, you literally just said that. Like, you're, I think you're ready. So, right. yeah, that's kind of uh, when I knew. And so I wish I did it a little bit sooner. Like, I could have started, you know, a month or two earlier, I think, confidently, that I could have. And um, I still would have had success and, and been able to give myself a little bit more time to test things out. Yeah. It really sounds like something that was key to that. And, and I think people can take away is that it's really just essential to build the confidence behind mm -hmm. the business, mm -hmm. behind what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, however you can do that, whether you're rehearsing it with family mm -hmm. or, um, you know, doing mock interviews or doing, um, I had another guest earlier on in the season mm -hmm. mentioned um, doing a free to fee mm -hmm. where they'd offer something to a business um, to build their portfolio, yeah. and give it a try. And, and, you know, if they, if they feel like sort of contributing for that piece of work, they can. Yeah. Um, but definitely setting that up. Don't worry about all the flashy yeah. stuff, yeah. you know, all the processes can work themselves out yeah. later yeah. once you've found that market that you want to target. Yeah. Um, but just, yeah, just go in, go in yeah. with confidence. That's yeah. what, that's the what processes like. were holding me up. I was like, ah, I don't know exactly, yeah. you know, do I need to have like a booking system online? Like, you know, yeah. it's a lot of money to have online. I now have oh, yeah. one and it saves me <laughs> a lot of time now. But when I first started, it's like, is this worth my money right now to like buy scheduling software and all the software I need for all this stuff and like yeah. booking so you really kind of need to like ease your way into it rather than like buying it all up front yeah. <laughs> before you've even got one client, right? You kind yeah. of have to work your way up. So yeah, no, it was, it was a really amazing learning opportunity and yeah, I, now I love sharing it with people so that they can try and maybe make a few less mistakes than I made and <laughs> make it a little <laughs> bit more efficient or yeah. grow some more confidence and know that they should start and that they are good enough at whatever their passion is to start it, uh, you know, like to become a business. Um, I'm a huge proponent of like not making every single hobby into a business because things, you know, should not be, yeah, uh, it, you know, everything we enjoy. Exactly. Exactly. That's part of that work life balance. Yeah. Don't like monetize every hobby so that you have things that you enjoy. Uh, but this was the perfect match for me to, to, make something that I love into something that I can also make money doing. So, yeah. That's great. And here's the big question. <laughs> that was on everybody's mind. Um, you know, every business you've had, you've had a little over a year of success yeah. now. And what is sort of the five year target for you? Where would you like to see uh, McKenzie Kirk Consulting? <laughs> I'm still such a baby business. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's hard to think about. Uh, I think about it a lot, but I don't have like, a solid answer yet because I'm still so young um, and my business is so young, both of those. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're sticking in Prince George for a long time, just bought a house. So I would love to connect with more business owners, help more business owners connect with more customers. Um, I would love to be, you know, known as a uh, social media consultant that can really help you grow your social media platforms um, to reach the right audience, specifically TikTok, because that's something that I really love doing and I see the power in it and I yeah. see how powerful it can be if you do it well um, without burning yourself out, like finding a schedule that works for you. So I would love to be um, kind of known for that. Uh, and yeah, I would love to have enough clients that I can be comfortable financially to like go on a vacation every year or take trips and, you know, afford to buy a crazy expensive uh, plane ticket to go to Vancouver Island to go to see my family <laughs> because it's more expensive to fly to Vancouver Island than it is I to, got that. I yeah, don't, I don't understand. <laughs> so, you know, I just, you know, being like financially stable and comfortable is, is a goal. I think that should be a goal for everyone. And so that's where I would like to be. I don't have like a solid number of like, I want to make this much. I think it's really going to change as my business grows, what I see myself 
uh, growing into because it's still very in the infant stage. But I would say enough clients where I am not burnt out and I'm helping as many people as I can. And, uh, you know, I'm paying my subcontractors as much as I can so that, uh, you know, they're, they're getting a fair wage and everyone is, you know, (laughs) that's, that's kind of like my, my goals. They're very, um, they're based in like happiness and, and wellness, right? They're not so much based on like monetary value numbers or like I want 10 clients every month or whatever it may be. Um, it's just the limit where I can have financial stability and happiness and health and have a good work-life balance and be helping as many people as I can. So, um, yeah, we'll see where I, where I get to in five years. And, uh, if I hire more subcontractors or grow into staff, uh, staff is a big jump from subcontractors. So I'm not sure exactly yet if I want to like grow into a 15 person agency and you know what I mean? Uh, or if I want to kind of, I know that this year I'm going to focus on really, um, honing in on my processes and like speeding things up for efficiency and client communication, building relationships with my current clients, um, and doing a little bit more of my own marketing, even though my books are full, I want to be better at my own marketing. And I think that that's something that, uh, is really important and yeah, just kind of, um, like, uh, what's the word? Sorry. Fine tuning. (laughs) I want it to be the year of (laughs) fine tuning. That's the word I was thinking of. Um, Because I think that I grew very quickly in the last year and now, you know, my books are full and that's amazing. But I would love to be able to just fine tune my my systems. I love filming with my clients in person. And so I want to be able to keep that in my schedule and help them, you know, film great videos that show their personality and their brand uh, that aren't just scripted videos and, and, you know, be a little bit creative about it. So leaving myself some creativity, some room for creativity, I think is, uh, one of my goals as well as making sure that I don't get bogged down and, you know, trying to grow my business to a certain number that I lose that part of myself and why I love the business, why I love this business and, and being in content creation and social media right now. So yeah, long, long winded, but I think that there's a lot of goals and there's not just one. So it's important to me that it's like a very holistic approach to growing my business so that I don't burn out. And yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Mackenzie, and sharing all this great advice uh, with some of our young entrepreneurs. And uh, I just would like to ask if you could close the show out with one last piece of advice. I think just not waiting And uh, don't hesitate if you think that you're ready and um, you kind of have everything ready to go, but you're just waiting because it's a, um, an issue of believing in yourself and having confidence, uh, know that you are not alone and just rip the bandaid off, (laughs) I think is the best advice I could give to people.